Hey, welcome. We are Libertarians. We got another reaction video. Uh, we're going to react to uh, Steven Crowder uh, talking about why we need the closed borders. And, uh, you know, you, you, we, we've obviously been, had met so many opportunities to change his mind. And we just apparently haven't done it yet. So we're going to play a little video from him. Uh, I'm joined by a lot of fun guys. Uh, you'll, get, you'll get to know him. We got Reinhold. We got Brian. We got Jacob. We got Remzo. We got Keaton. I'm Hody. Let's get into it. I'm going to play. And as soon as you want to say something, guys, just say something and I'll pause it. This is something else that really bothers me. People were talking about this recently. I think I heard, I think I heard Joe Rogan echo this sentiment. And, and, and I don't want to say it was only him, but he was talking, quoting somebody else who had made this statement. And a lot of people, at least. He talks so fast without actually saying anything, right? Like, like fucking uh, Canadians. Yeah, come on, come on. All right, get to it, get to it. Sentiment where they say, what are borders? I just heard someone talking about this right, the other yeah. day again on CNN. That's what prompted it. It's right. just this arbitrary what? Because someone laid out a line, created no. a line that this divides us, and we're supposed to believe that that's a real thing. No, you know what borders are? And it really bothers me when people try and be so reductive. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with being reductive. It's a valid point. But in this case, it is false. No, you know what? A All right. So, you know, obviously, he's going to explain what a border actually is. Right. He, here's the, here, here comes the expert coming at you guys. This is, this is what is everything you thought you knew, all that invisible line nonsense. No, the borders are very real thing. First of all, he, somebody said he was a comedian. Don't you have to be funny to be a comedian? <laughs> <laughs> he is dressed in the, in this video. I don't know if you've seen it. He is dressed like a leprechaun while watching, I think it's the Emmys Grammys. That, that doesn't, uh, that's not funny. That's just silly. It's stupid. There's nothing so funny about that. These days. I, don't, I don't know. He's talking really fast. Isn't that what made Bernie Mac <laughs> funny? Like, I mean, isn't that, is that not Ben funny? Shapiro does it too, but he doesn't yeah. call himself a comedian. R.I.P. Uh, Bernie Mac. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too soon, Hody. Too soon. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, everybody. I went too low. I, I, I got that low ground on lock, guys. All right. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Let me turn it over to Crowder. Not with the, the high ground, ground Hody. Yeah. <laughs> Border represents, folks, just like we're talking about foreign language films and that offends people versus international. The reason that borders exist is because they are a physical manifestation of shared or even more importantly, now in 2020, unshared values. It's All right. So they're a physical manifestation of shared or not shared values. So as soon as you believe something different than me, a border just <laughs> pops up. Right. That's how things go. I mean, that 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 that. Um, in today's politics, that's almost so true. People put up their walls as soon as you say something different than them. <laughs> we this got Paul joining us too. From LA. Escape from LA is one of my favorite movies just because of the first five minutes where they're like, we had to cast them away. So we pushed Los Angeles off into the ocean. I'm like, <laughs> they could do that? <laughs> Like Buzz, Bugs Bunny sawing off the state of Florida. <laughs> right. I mean, everybody, you know, is calling for this, like, bo like a, a fence, like a mountain in between, right? And, and I think they got it wrong. They need to dig the ditch, right? Like, the, mm. like you said, they dig down. The boats. Right, the moat, the alligator-filled moat. That, that's what I'm looking for. I want to see some people swim across that. If you really want your borders, Mr. Crowder, stop talking about a wall, start talking about a ditch. You that's know? how we it, recruit our next Olympic team. Yeah. <laughs> because by the time you're the, done uh, running, jumping, and swimming, you're already in America and you're getting the gold. Yeah. Uh, can we please put a giant crocodile filled moat underneath the pole <laughs> vaulting in the Olympics next time? <laughs> like, well, I mean, if we can afford the space for us, I don't see why not. Go the ahead, Max. XFL Hull. Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> so, wasn't it the Western, you know, powers that decided that someplace like Iraq would just have arbitrary borders that had no, no, uh, care about what the shared values of the people who are living in that country were yep churchill well, i thought everybody in iraq had the same values like the kurds and the and the government they seem to be <laughs> yeah the, hand the in hand, right? and the Shia I mean, just they love each other right and the kurds right. all, all get along democracy. all the time ryan Our stole teacher. my thunder <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> turns out my comment in the back pocket i had on waiting. a piece of paper you can just redraw where values are too <laughs> Right. Every year, don't we gerrymander this? Like, you know, every year, like our politicians are like, all right, guys, where are the shared values now? I, I've lost track. <laughs> I don't have the same shared values as my neighbor. I'm supposed to put a, I don't know. I mean, yeah, no, you a, make that I have a border pay. on my property, but I'm not going <laughs> to tell him he can't come on my property when he needs to or wants to. I think almost yeah, I think all, all of us, like, okay, okay it. Almost all of us have a statist in the house, probably, right? I mean, I don't, I don't think we have, you know, I, well, that's why I hope you lock your doors at night, you know, 
I mean, I, well, I mean, to, get, to not be funny about it, um, trying to say that borders are about va- shared values is just trying to say that uh, it's us versus them, or we're better than you, or something like that. So this is nationalism is all it is. If borders are just an arbitrary line that's put in place in order to enforce laws of a government and right. provide protections for certain people, I, I uh, like that, that we just kind of agreed upon. Right. He stops himself even because he says shared values or unshared values because he had to do that because as soon as he said shares values, there's a lot of shared values we have with people on the other side of borders. And if that's how we did borders, then all of a sudden our borders look a lot different. So it, 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 you know what? I'm going to let him Then we share a national border with people like Bernie Sanders and his you know group, right? So I mean, right. yeah. I don't share He's, those values. Right. I mean, he's going to get real specific about the values he's talking about, because obviously there's, you know, it, it, that matters exactly which values are shared and unshared. It's not that yeah. someone just decided to lay a line down. It's, for example, the United States border. We're- it's not at all like gerrymandering, guys. Come on. Come on. Get real. We're saying, hold on a second. The reason we have a border, the reason we have country boundaries is because we value liberty. We value personal freedom. We- Th- that's why we drew the borders, right? Because we value does, liberty and freedom. Wasn't that in? Does, wasn't that the uh, end of the Mexican-American War? We value yeah, liberties, oh. and so that's why we're. Good. Wasn't that the line between United States and Canada was just kind of like it was all about liberty? It wasn't because that just happened to be along a parallel on the map. If that was you know, true, an we, arbitrary line, can we please <laughs> make those lines a little bit larger to value liberty yeah. <laughs> a little bit more? Please yeah. make those lines larger. Yeah. <laughs> this, I don't want just a line. I need like a, like, you know, what, what size of the bricks are we talking? I want to talk, they're talking about height. I need to talk about thickness because that matters too, right, ladies? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> all right it's about how you use the border too you know yeah <laughs> right okay it's about the firepower on the board all right i'm sorry let's see here we go yeah. we value the individual over the group we value the right to protect yourself we value that women are created equal that all people are created equal that women are not subservient that they can drive cars that they don't have to hide their face so we keep some people out from experiencing these individual rights because they don't have the individual rights because they don't believe in the individual rights, but they want those individual rights, but we have to keep them. I, I lost track. I, I believe, I believe in borders. I believe in a extremely limited government, but this is a terrible argument for either. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing people don't understand. When you say open borders, you're, you're specific, specifying borders. This is not no borders that we argue for. We argue for borders. We just order, argue for them to be open for travel across without, unless there's a specific reason to close them, right? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, t- I take a very, uh, you know, c- civil society, almost Alexander Hamilton stance on this. It has nothing to do with, you know, where you can and can't go. It has more to do with the boundaries of the state. Like, where does the state end? And I mean, I grew up in a border town in Sierra Vista, Arizona. And for the longest time, I I grew up in the same town that my mother uh, grew up in. I mean, for the longest time in that, in Arizona, you know, all all those border states, I'm I'm repeating myself. For a long time, the border was basically just there and everyone kind of knew where it was and people could come and go as they please and there was really no problem mexico was a very stable prosperous country and people would come into the united states to work and then they'd go home because they want to go home and then americans would go into mexico buy a bunch of shit and come back it was fine it wasn't until the whole drug epidemic happened that we basically created the cartels that we really had to start clamping the border down and i see it less of you know protecting america from people that want to abuse the welfare state specifically when i'm talking to mexico um it's more of you know we need to board up the the you know the windows and the doors because the giant fucking mess we made outside might get in and we don't want anyone to talk about that Mm. but it used to be extremely safe and now there are parts of the wachuca mountains in my hometown that you can't go on because the u.s government has signs up that says that they can't guarantee your safety it's not because they were inherently violent it's because we created a violent epidemic and we try not to talk about it so when you give guns to violent people and forbid peaceful people from having having weapons uh okay i see so uh and when i need a crown on my tooth that's when i want the borders the least that's 
that that for me is kind of where I'm just like, all right, that's a shared value that I have with them is making is doing crowns on teeth for really cheap. <laughs> well, and the thing too is he's trying to make the the argument that if somebody comes from one of those uh, environments, those cultures, that they're going to bring that culture with them and infest it in here and try to make it be what it is. The people, if they liked their culture, would stay there. They're coming here because they're trying to escape that culture so and you're go saying, to a place that has freedom and liberty and all the promises that were supposed to be given to everybody. So and we're spending all our time invalidating all of that and all the reasons why people were coming here in the first place. The yeah, like I went left, to Europe. I'm sorry, Hody, I interrupted. Oh, you're good. The people who left the Soviet Union didn't bring communism. They, they hated communism. Like I thought Ayn mm-hmm. Rand was all about communism. That's... <laughs> When, that was my big takeaway. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those situations where it's like, you know, I, I had to go to Detroit for work back in like October, November, and I know I had to go through Dearborn. So I'm being told by, you know, all these right wingers, oh, Dearborn is basically like, you know, little, little Somalia and, you know, they've got madrasas everywhere and they've just taken over and Sharia law everywhere. And it's like, yeah, I saw like a lot of Somalis. I saw a lot of, you know, people who appeared to be Muslim, but they were just kind of doing their own shit and they opened businesses and they were just doing their own thing. I spoke to locals who had been, you know, from the Detroit area for years and they're like, yeah, they, they're there. What, what about it? It's like, there's, there's no real fucking problem. No. Yeah, when, when people say Sharia law, they don't even understand what they're talking about. Right. So that's, that's the frustrating part is it's, it's now just become a word that people use. Oh, Sharia law means we're going to, we're going to execute these people because they're gay. We're going to uh, mutilate stone all these women, women and, cheat, everything. Yeah. and it's like, that's, that's not what the majority of people who come here, who also believe in Sharia law are seeing as that they, they believe that is just like a biblical law for Christians where Christians say, okay, I believe in the biblical law, but it's a personal thing that I follow. I don't want to enforce that on anybody. And if you read the Quran, it says in there that you should, they shouldn't be forcing Muslim views on anybody. So I mean, it um, even goes back a to personal Mex- thing. Yeah. Like it even goes back to, you know, like why do Mexicans come in this country? A majority of Mexicans I know, and listen, I will trade an illegal Mexican with, uh, you know, a regular American most any day of the week. Cause they work. I've never seen a homeless Mexican in my life. Let me repeat that. I've never seen a homeless Mexican. Those people work. They have a good, strong family unit. They have a very good, you know, respectable Catholic faith. They, they work and they don't want to be here. They're here because here's where the money is. Here's where the job is. And they don't want to pay taxes. Guess what? I don't want to either. But for if the IRS is watching this, I'm totally paying this year. But like, that's, that's, not, that's not the point. It's like they would rather be at home. You know, there's a saying oh, that there's God. no atheist in a foxhole. I firmly believe there's no closed bordered person in a, like a tamale stand. Like I just firmly believe like that's where it really ends when the rubber hits the road. When we say, all right, put up or shut up. That, yeah. that, was a, that was a chapter in my book, Stay Away from the Libertarians, Taco <laughs> Trucks on Every Corner. It's yeah. like nobody, nobody really complains about the Mexicans. And it's like, you know, here's the thing. If a Mexican is taking your job, then that's a you problem. Yeah. I mean, all they do is wear, wear big sombreros and sleep under cactus. If that guy could sleep under your, if that guy can take your job, I mean, you well, just, and, you just take and the funniest enough. part about that is that the same people who are complaining about uh, these people taking their jobs, so they want to limit competition in their workplace so they can give be guaranteed work, are the same people who say, well, we shouldn't have socialism and guaranteed work. Yeah. All right. right? Let's laugh like, at Crowder well, some more. You're, you're, it's the same thing. Yeah, here we go. We value free enterprise, not giving everything to the government. We value that- We value not giving everything to the government. So the Democratic I Party just got shipped true. overseas. I wish that was true. <laughs> that I mean, would value, be so great, right? All human- We value we not don't giving have everything to the government, but you know, let's give absolute power to the government. You know, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, as long as it's my right. stuff, yeah. We value that all human, we value that we don't have slavery as opposed to many countries where there is indentured servitude. It is important for people to realize that borders are a physical manifestation of unshared values. And you know what's also important? That's also why the legal immigration thing is a big deal. The only reason, the only reason, the sole reason that- Here it comes guys, the sole reason. He said it a lot, so it's here it comes. We have an immigration system by which you can migrate here legally. By Okay, so with what you guys know about why we have an immigration system that has to be legalized, do you think he's about to get the right or the wrong answer? 
Exceptionally. I believe he's about to give the insane answer. <laughs> Here we go. All right, go off your rocker, Stephen. Go. What you can move into this country legally is to ensure that you share the same values. That's why there's a citizenship oath. When people yeah. act as though, oh, that's why. Oh. To make sure that they share the same values. It, so, it, so it wasn't, you know, racist in the early progressive era that instituted uh, checks to. Um, oh. Darn. That's your history textbook talking, out, yeah. Paul. You statist. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, and he talks about to become a citizen. I don't remember you have to become a citizen in order to come here and hang out or visit or live for a few years, right? I mean, why, why do you have to become a citizen to do that? Well, you don't have to in a lot of countries. A lot of countries, you can go there as a guest worker, but they actually limit you to what age you are. Because, like, if I wanted to go to Australia right now, and be a guest worker, I couldn't do it unless I fit inside a list of specific jobs. And if I don't fit in that list and I don't have enough money to be able to live there, guess what? You're not staying, you're going home. Yeah, so, and, and that, but that's what I'm, that's, he's making the point that this is our shared values. Well, right. what are those shared values? Liberty and, yeah. and individualism. Yeah. And he, then he just poops all over it by saying, well, we should limit uh, movement and we should prevent these people from getting here and all. It's like, I'm pretty sure that my neighbors are communists. Are we going to start throwing them out of helicopters because they don't share American <laughs> values? Right. But I mean, he's, he's himself expressing an, an American value, in my opinion, he is. of protectionism. There, but, there's the, the tankies, right? And then there's the helicopters. And I think we're, we're the gators, right? Feed them to the alligators. Like that, that's what we're pushing for here. No, but what you said, Brian, like it's a list of demographics. Then it becomes a demographic thing. Not, it's not about liberty and individualism. And if you get all that, right? Because then Stephen Crowder would be the only one allowed in this country, I assume, you know. <laughs> Those fucking Canadians. Yeah, yeah. That's why we have, dude, I, I went to a thing in Canada. I went over, at, at, or it was uh, in Seattle, but I had some friends from Canada and it was real close. We just went back and forth so many times, not one checkpoint, barely a sign that said, welcome to Canada. And so whenever people like my security and my safety, I'm just like, yeah, well, which border are you talking about? You know, like, come on, please. Well, I mean, it's, it's obviously the country we screwed up because remember the last time we gave guns to cartels in Canada? <laughs> don't either. <laughs> We might have given cocaine to the moose, though, eh? <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's why that's why you have so many moose murders. I mean, it has less it has less to do with oh we're we're protecting our jobs, we're protecting our people. It's more like don't look over the wall. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to see what we did. <laughs> All right. These folks just want to come into this country. Well, hold on a second. Look at the values in many of these South American countries. Do they share the American? Oh, so we're sharing the values with the nations, not with the people coming across. Right. Because so that's is, not collectivist thought. As soon, as soon as you're from a country that loves communism, oh, it's over. That's your values too. You know? hey, hang, on, hang on, I got a question. Didn't we install a lot of those shithole governments that he's talking about? Oh, <laughs> South oh, Brian, American that's low even by my standards. <laughs> I, say, I thought we installed a lot of those shithole governments. And, and so that's why I'm kind of sitting there going, if they don't have our standards, why would we put them in? So yeah, What's the term? Banana this, Republic, that, I think? The Contras <laughs> were totally cool, guys. Yeah, that's, that, those are our despots, okay? They would, have been, they would have been way better than the other despots, okay? It, it's it's like what, we have the best it's, it's like what I used to say about Saddam Hussein and the former president of Egypt. It's like, yeah, listen, they're assholes, and then they're our assholes, and we leave our assholes alone. Yeah, <laughs> and big surprise. Someone who's not, then we've got somebody else's asshole to deal with. And why are our assholes not being nice to their assholes? I thought that was the whole, that's what yeah, was going to create stability. Those assholes. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, the reality is all those countries down there in, in Central America, Mexico especially, and everywhere else have significant corruption problems, just like we do in the U.S. and everywhere else. Every time you throw government in the play, guys got news for you. Somebody's on the take, and there's that rampant corruption. The problem is it's just removing it in those countries, especially Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua. It's so endemic and it's just expected that you just can't get out of it. So, and that's why those people want to leave because they realize there's nothing they can do. Well, the, and the, the places they're coming from, the Northern Triangle was listed as one of the most dangerous places to live for the past eight years. Because well, that place we backed too. a coup in that country, right? Hillary Clinton in the State Department backed a coup in that country. And that government that ended up taking over 
uh, was more despotic and, and started killing people who disagree with them. And now people are fleeing their lives for their lives because they're, they're being hunted down and killed. You were more likely to die just as a citizen of like El Salvador than you were uh, uh, as a combatant in an active war zone in the Israeli-Palestinian war. Like, it, like there's some bad stuff going on there, Stephen. Maybe they want to leave for other reasons than, oh, we love slavery, but things aren't working out too here right now. Let's bring... Let's but, bring literal slavery to the United States, says every remember, illegal. Remember the last time a couple states joined together to separate from the federal government because they didn't have shared values? Yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. is such a lazy argument by Stephen Crowder. Like Rimzo was saying earlier, like you can, you can have the idea that thinking that in most libertarians, it's my understanding and my, my idea of this issue has evolved over time as I've learned more, but Libertarians are not against borders. They're very much pro borders with private, you know, with the idea of private property. Like you can control who comes in and out of your own home. Yes. You can control who you want to interact with and who you don't want to interact with. They're, they're very much pro borders with your own private property. It's just like, should the government have these arbitrary lines where they eminent domain a line in the middle of your property and say, this is ours now. And then we get to control who gets to come on and off of what was your private property, which is now ours. So I, I mean, yeah, I took my girlfriend to five years to my hometown uh, a couple of years ago. And the one thing that freaked her the hell out is I, I don't know if many of you guys are familiar with Arizona, but like the Sinaloa drug cartel, like it, when you look at the per capita number of illegal aliens that are entering the United States, a majority of them used to come through Arizona. What they ended up doing was now throughout the entire state, you have these giant border patrol checkpoints where you have to stop and you have to get quickly screened by an agent. And like, this isn't, listen, like I'm a Republican. And Republicans hate me when I say this, but that entire, you know, system one, you've just turned Arizona into a giant police state Two, the border agents profile you. And for the record, the border patrol agents are actually very diverse. You've got some, you know, Anglo Americans, you've got some Mexican Americans, but they're looking for a certain people. They're not looking for my blonde hair, green eyed girlfriend. Yeah, More they often than not, they're looking at me. Yeah. And it became a giant situation of if the problem is here, then you've already failed at your job. So how about you go out to the actual border and you leave me the fuck alone? But even worse than that, though, when you talk about the Republican Party, is that they claim they want people who have the same values. Those people coming from South America are usually very socially a Republican, socially conservative, religious, you know, Catholic. Oh yeah, those darn Catholics and, are screwing up our culture. Yeah. And they're just <laughs> trying to come. They're trying to come here, and all they're doing is making those people vote Democrat, mm -hmm. because the Democrats aren't trying to throw them out of the country. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's boy, it's almost like embracing their culture would have helped the Republican Party. All right, Stephen, get back to the crazy American values. Do they believe in the power of the individual? Do they believe in freedom of speech? Do they believe that people yes, should have the right to protect their home and property? Yes. Right. What are they doing, yeah. rooting out corruption in office? And I know some people. Are uh, they're I'm leaving the corruption out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> These guys hop in the border are all like, we really liked Kim Jong Un. We're just kind of hungry, so we're going over to the United States, right? That's yeah, we're not going back. Yeah. Well, we're leaving. We're leaving in fear for our lives from the corrupt government, and we want to come over and make this country this country corrupt so that we can uh, just enjoy that same feeling because it gives us a rush. That's Remember the last thinking. time an American soldier or South Korean soldier kicked a North Korean back into North Korea? Yeah. <laughs> That's a long way to hold somebody's hand, right? Like you're in trouble. Or like pull their ear. Like, hey, yeah, no, naughty. We're going all the way back to North Korea now. This is Alien Gonzalez all over again. All right. Go ahead, Steven. Right now, I'm say, well, what about Donald Trump? Okay, look at look at Venezuela, folks. Why would we want to bring in people who might bring in values from a whole South American country where they don't value any of the tenets of the, right. uh, of, of, uh, the principles of this country. Holy that's a, shit. That's yeah, accurate, that's right? Insane. Did Maduro won with 100% of the vote? Is that what it was? A legit vote, 100%? Did I miss that election? Crushed it. Crushed it. <laughs> I think a lot of Venezuelans missed that election. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a huge victory. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Uh, we Perfect. had like 
we even had our adventure. own our own spies like in the system and we're like hey they just got a result from this precinct and uh there's like 20 people in this precinct and 200 votes got cast for that guy so just as a heads up that might not have been a legitimate election right this is like a chicago mayoral race yeah <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, first hand. rahm emanuel's out now he should run in venezuela he could take maduro down <laughs> And the funny part too is that the, they enacted their own governmental laws to to basically remove the, to invalidate the election because it was obviously invalid, right? And we've got we've got some certain libertarians who are trying to back Maduro and say he should still be the one in power. It's like it's not a coup; they're enacting their own laws yeah. to you- to do a proper getting rid of corruption in government. And you're backing that. I don't understand you. I mean, if I got to get serious real quick, we had a video of a citizen who is standing up to the corrupt government getting run over by a truck Mm. because he was trying to stand in their way. How many Americans do you know stand up against corruption that hard? Couldn't we use a little influx of people that are like, hey, screw that corruption? Like, if that's really your concern, I think these Venezuelan people who are leaving instead of backing the regime are probably right up your alley. I mean, we could just look at what happened yesterday in the primaries that I don't think anybody actually paid attention to uh i mean bernie sanders was in the lead amongst florida democrats and then after his castro literacy program comment that just fucking fell apart and they gave it to <laughs> sleeping joe <laughs> that was the dumbest thing ever. turns out most cuban americans don't like castro <laughs> <laughs> Can't figure out what happened there. I isn't that odd? Isn't that odd? aren't there? Aren't there a bunch of pro Castro people in in Florida? And I thought that's what that was about. Miami yeah. was all Castro, right? Right. Yeah. Like, those people who are coming over on life rafts are like, all right, we just we're desperate to bring the message of Fidel here, and so we just no, 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 no. Cuba kicked out all the illiterate ones, and then they got to the ballot box and they were confused. Bernie, uh. it both starts with B. <laughs> you know, you know what's crazy is uh, that is my favorite letter of the alphabet. B, so I just vote for the bees. <laughs> I just think it's crazy that the entire time he's talking about you know Venezuela and all this stuff, he's all every single person from Venezuela is accountable for everything the Venezuelan yep. government did apparently. But in that context, I guess then do we have to pay for the sins of our country then? Because that's a very dangerous game that. Uh, I don't think we want to get into that contest. I'm not exactly ready to take account for interning the Japanese yet. You know what? I, uh, I say we do. Blowing up the Iraqis in Afghanistan. Blowing up weddings. I oh, say we didn't do. have our values. Yeah, the Kurds <laughs> say hello. Let's all make sure that Crowder is the one that pays first, though. Yes. All right, he's first in line, right, Stephen? Borders exist as a physical manifestation of values that we share and values that we don't share. And the reason we have a system so that we can check and make sure people are coming through is to ensure that only the people who share our values and want to take part in the American experiment and by the way, uh, also We've already learn the this. language, become a part get. of the American culture and appreciate American culture are coming to this country. How we've lost sight of that now where everyone is entitled to go, to move into any country that they want to because right. we are all citizens of the world is asinine, it's stupid, it's the kind of rhetoric that leads to obviously silly, meaningless decisions like switching foreign film to international, but you know. All right, I'm gonna pause it there. Okay. Has man so, ever yeah, been to yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah, southern uh, border? Yeah. <laughs> I, just one thing before we go, before we move on to what he just said. But he, just, he, when we started replaying that, he said something else that just really boggled my mind that he got away with. When he said, "Borders are our shared values and our unshared values." That what does that mean when? It's the exact opposite of what you're just trying to say, right? We want people who have our shared values, but we also borders are about unshared values. You're completely contradicting yourself and no one calls you on it. What I want to know is what exactly is American culture? Because, uh, yeah, Kentucky culture here is way different than even Indianapolis culture or San Francisco culture. Yep. Like we have, we have so many like, different cultures in the United States. It's just amazing that Yeah, like for your realize. token, you know, trad conservative, it's like why do we have states? It's like saying I'm not allowed to leave California if I was mm-hmm. in California because 
you know, I might not be a hundred percent on the values of Kansas or something. Right. Oh, well, I'm in Utah. Republicans say that's a good thing, so you don't go into Texas and take yeah. over Texas. Well, well, that's say, if you're in California, it wasn't you're... because of like shared values. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to. Well, and, or unshared California. values. It might yeah. be unshared values that could that create that border too. Right? Well, greetings from Salt Moat City but out here in he's, Utah. He's we... talking, but he's talking about should we let everybody in here? I'm like, that's what made this country what it was. This is we had open borders for, uh, for the most part, except for a period of time where they were trying to keep the Chinese out. But other than that, we were letting people in and we were sharing our experiences and becoming a better person, a better organism. That's why you don't, you, you don't have, you know, relations with your own family members. You branch out, you have your tree has branches on it because you've never sorry, been to West Virginia. To sorry, West Virginia. Culture, sorry. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> So that's what built us to be so fast, built us to be such a, a, a powerhouse of a country. Uh, in our, we had great ideas. I mean, look at what Carnegie was, uh, Scott, you know, from Scotland. Yeah. We had uh, Rockefeller was, you know, all these people came and made themselves great and made the country great because of it. Yeah. Uh, we lose the, we the, lose the war everything. without Lafayette, by the way. We lose, there is no America, and so therefore yeah. nothing to debate. If we say, sorry, Marquis de Lafayette, this is an American war. This is an American experience. you got to yeah. stay over there. Yeah, and look at Hamilton. Hamilton wasn't even born in the United States mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. He, he couldn't even be president, probably. Yeah. Well, here's the one thing that I, I always find funny about this, is that when I was growing up, and as I said earlier before we started recording, was about growing up with a lot of diverse, diverse neighborhood. A lot of those kids, guess what the first thing they wanted to do was? It, they didn't want to be like their parents. They wanted to be like the kids they went to school with. So the first thing they started doing was they started to get rid of it. And I had a lot of kids that grew up in Islam. They didn't want to wear the, the they didn't want to wear the, you know, they didn't want to wear a, um, sorry. Hijab. 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 Thank you. The thing. They didn't want to wear the hijab. <laughs> they didn't want to. They wanted to go ahead. Hey, they, you know what? I want to have a hot dog. Is that okay? You know, and yeah. don't tell my parents. But that's the thing is that these kids want to it. And what's the greatest thing we can do for these kids is let them have that experience and maybe learn, hey, look, you know what? There's some really cool things in my parents. You know, when they get older, they figure it out. Okay, my parents were right about some stuff. But there's some things that they're wrong about as well. How, how weak and is your culture and religion? Up, they're never going to experience like, that. Right. How, how weak oh, is yeah. your culture and religion if the guy that you let come in to open a hot dog stand or a like, taco stand manages to convert you to Catholicism? Like your Mormonism <laughs> is so bad yeah. that, the hot, that, much, that the taco stand guy was just, it's like, oh, well, there goes Mormon culture that the taco people took that over and now we're Catholics. That was hell of a taco he made. Yeah, it was just, and, <laughs> and it convinced, and I all would, my kids went to his stand. I couldn't control it. I would <laughs> hate to have that little faith in one. What I believe in right <laughs> like how bad is your culture uh, uh, I'll let him keep going you know what? I'm a big fan of borders I'm a big fan of borders and I'm a big fan of of knowing who's coming into the country legally because I don't have a problem with putting on team jerseys when you have citizens of the world who believe that women need four witnesses for a rape who believe that you don't right. have the yeah. right our team because that that's like a te like team jerseys right like that's literally the people team. coming here believe the exact same fucking thing yeah. Like yeah. Kavanaugh, because we gotta, we can't believe the women because we, we got to have four witnesses that prove that this happened, <laughs> right? Is that a Crowder? Weren't you on that side? Well, right. I mean, beyond that, like, has he just admitted that it's no more than jerseys and, you know, rooting for a team? Yeah. Like, it, it's about him not wanting those people in his country. That's all it yeah. is. Yeah, keep those Buckeye fans in their side of the stands. I mean, that's what I'm talking uh, about. Well, <laughs> I, think all, I think we can all agree. And here's the thing: I, I don't assume that everybody that believes in borders is racist. I know that Crowder's not racist. That's a trite thing that gets thrown around. You do your argument no credit when you throw all those people. I never, I never said racist. racist. I, I, no, I, I can know, say I know. nationalist. I can say right. uh, bigot. Like, like when Those I worked for the, are. Yeah. like when I worked for the Austin Peterson campaign when he was running for president, like his border stance was this: Are you a criminal? Do you have a disease? Do you intend to get work soon? Okay, go in. Like it's that simple. Right. When you go to Arizona and you're near Nogales. They're not asking you to recite the preamble of the Constitution. They're asking you: Do you have a passport? Are you a criminal? What are you doing here? Okay, bye. The There's reason no values issue, test there. The reason this issue is such a slippery slope is because of the the 
size of the state that we're in now. The, the, the size of the government that we're under right now is, is completely ridiculous. And the size of the welfare state is completely re- ridiculous. And, and the thing is, is like, if we didn't have such a massive welfare state, these people wouldn't care about people coming. Who cares about people coming over and getting a job and contributing? No, I have to disagree. Uh, I do believe that the uh, welfare state is just a convenient scapegoat for people that just want to distance themselves from an other group. It, it's the same xenophobia that we've seen throughout history. We're just seeing it now. Yeah, I mean, you can't come in this country and get welfare for five years, right? I don't think the Mexican That's... landscapers in my neighborhood are living at large on handouts. There's, yeah, nobody. Yeah. They're all just wanting to work. They like, want to. I mean, they they work harder than most people I see. I will. You know, I will trade do the jobs American I don't want to do for a hardworking Mexican any day of the week. I think to Keaton's point, like we do have a massive entitlement state, but and and I think we look around, especially as libertarians, and we kind of like well. Yeah, which entitlement are you looking at? Why should we sacrifice the entitlements of that are like, oh, so that your kids go to school, right, is a really common one. And I think that's actually the single largest one, the, the public school subsidy for illegal immigrants that they take advantage of, you know, or, or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but the corporate um, subsidies for agriculture is like 11 million times that amount. I mean, it's, I think what it is, is it's not understand. I, I think a lot of maybe if our Republicans, public education system was any good, maybe then I would have a problem. with it. Right. I think they get hijacked into thinking that that's a normal argument. They say, I mean, we, I mean, heck, we have a guy running for president right now. That's like, Hey, no borders and no, no welfare, no borders. Right. That's his big thing. And it's like, you know, we have to end one first when, I think with economic literacy, you understand and like, I, 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 this is supposed to be a fun, funny video. So I don't want to get into like non-discretionary spending and what all that means, but essentially it, it, that's not the way it works out. Right. And ultimately these people bring in a lot more than they, than a lot more good things than bad things. When we look back in American history and we think of, I mean, Reinhold brought up when we were the brief period of time, when we didn't let Chinese people come in here, it was a bad time. Right. And so all, all these are bad times. We have good relationships with Canada and it's largely open borders there. Utah has good relationships with Wyoming, largely open borders there. Most counties get along, largely open borders there. Bad relationships with Mexico. Oh, better close the border because that's how you fix these problems, right? Is creating distance as opposed to familiar, familiarity, right? I mean, yeah, I this mean, is- when I- 20 years ago, we were talking about we can solve this problem, which they saw as a problem, which I didn't see as a problem, but they saw as a problem of illegal immigration by just making Mexico better and fixing the problems and helping them fix their problems. And all of a sudden that just goes away because that's, that's somebody else's issue. That's not us, right? It's like you, you don't understand how this works. And, and I know you don't like globalism and I don't like globalism, but there's a difference there's a, there's a space in between globalism and nationalism that people need to start sitting in and and existing in instead of trying to go to these extremes of either side, which both of them are authoritarian and, and awful. Right. But to, to clarify what I was earlier saying, too, I wasn't saying that the, the, the immigration, those that are immigrating over to America are coming here just to get on welfare. I mean, everyone here kind of agrees on the same point that these people are wanting to work. They're wanting to contribute. I want them here. It's just the same. It's just, this is one of the things that I'm constantly trying to evolve and and gather more information and form an opinion is one of these things has to go first. It's either borders or it's either welfare state. And when you have one side of the political aisle arguing for unlimited health care, Unlimited, you literally had a guy running for the Democratic Party to give $1,000 to everyone in the country. It's just like, if you cannot have a border flooding people in and also have an entire government program dedicated to giving everyone free health care, dedicated to giving everyone literally free money on a UBI program, those two sure things can. cannot coincide. Sure they can it just gets really expensive potentially. I was gonna yeah, say. It just gets expensive and <laughs> people go, wait, we can't afford this. We better cut back on doing this stuff. You're not going to convince people to give up welfare programs and all these other government programs by keeping people out. That's never going to happen. So, but, well, I guess it comes down to what's the easier sell. But, but here's the thing. When you look at the numbers, 
sterilization. But it's not even about sell. It's about the fact. So <laughs> the people who are coming in the, are, are actually a net economic benefit, right? We end up making more tax money off of them than, say, second or third generation Americans. Because second or third generation Americans are, uh, you know, it's, it's the entitlement to it. They, they feel like this is their deal. They should be able to do this and do that. They don't have to work. And I don't want those types of jobs. I'm just going to collect unemployment and I'm just, I'll, I'll get this art program degree that that's going to do, uh, do nothing for me. So they're the ones that end up costing us more in our tax revenue being paid to help take care of them than the people who are coming in illegally now, or legally. I, I do want to, and we'll move on. I'm going to let Steven go here, but I think, uh, I think the, one of the issues is would more people come in if we just completely stopped trying and opened our borders and would more destitute people come in? Yeah, probably. But what Reinhold said, right. But also, also, I think like, I'm, I'm trying to kind of get a middle ground here so we can move on. I think the thing is, is that that creates a problem that we should solve that problem and not the problem of freedom of movement. That's the better problem to be solving is these economic woes that get created because we allowed freedom of movement. Well, that's, that, that was the whole reason, if you read it, like, uh, like uh, the reason Hayek went from socialist to um, capitalist. He's converted by Mises, and it was largely because of this argument right here. It's because, like, well, if you have this system, you have to regulate all of the people within your area. And he said, well, that's not realistic. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, now I'm a capitalist, right? All right, uh, moving on with Steven. To speak yeah. out against the government. You know what? I'm glad that we have a dividing line and I'd like there to be a f-ing wall. How about that? Hey there, YouTube viewer, if you like this um, video. He said the F word. I didn't like that video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you like this video, please subscribe. I like Steven Crowder. He's one of those guys like, like Ben Shapiro, where if he actually goes like issue by issue, He's seventy five percent libertarian, but that's not what libertarianism. Is. That's not what libertarianism is, right? No. It's not a matter of issues. It's a matter of actually believing in like individual ism. Individual- yeah, I, I had a weird situation. So like, I I don't say I'll, I disagree with Ben Shapiro on a lot of stuff. I don't really say it publicly because he endorsed my book, uh, my oh. first book in twenty eighteen. But what's really funny, uh, Jeremy Frankel. Uh, great great commentator he wrote the review and shapiro piggybacked off of it but like in in the review of the book they only spoke about like the anti-liberal parts of it and they ignored the rest of it so what was really funny was you had a lot of people that thought i was shitting on libertarians and you had a lot of libertarians that thought i was shitting on everybody else and all i realized was nobody really read the book because when you do that and this isn't a pitch for my own book but it was it was giantly inconvenient and that's the thing about it. They want to have all their cake and eat it too. But what they realize is that the cake is on the floor and oh shit, they just gave a bunch of guns to the cartels. <laughs> so this whole thing, like, you know, the whole border and, you know, as I mentioned way earlier on, there was never a problem until we started instilling crime because last I checked all the money and guns were going one way and all the drugs and human trafficking was going the other way. And we don't like to talk about that because it's drastically inconvenient. No, it's a great point. It's a great point. That's why I think Reagan should have been impeached for Iran Contra. And I like Reagan. I still think he should have been impeached for that. Impeach them all. And so should have Bush. Bush should have been impeached because they were trying to get him for that. And 9-11. Bill Barr is the one who got him (laughs) off. (laughs) That's why he's hired now is because of what he did for Bush. Yeah. I guess I can probably be more petty than Paul Copeland when it comes to impeaching people. Like, I, I, I'm like, yes. Like, it is, you just mentioned one bad authoritarian thing that is funded by theft, and I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, get him out. And then it's like, well, then we'll have to pee, impeach everybody. And I'm like, oh, oh, there's only so hard Heaven I can forbid. get right now, guys. There's only so <laughs> erect I can get. So please, please I, I, you just, yeah, yeah, stop speaking uh, uh, lovely whispers in my ear. Uh, any final disses? Anything you've been holding back on? Jacob, you've been so quiet and so nice. I want, I want to hear you be mean. No, I've just been absorbing everything, you know. Every time Reinhold talks about history, I learn like a hundred new things I didn't know. So <laughs> this wasn't meant to be informative. This is meant to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't help it. Yeah, so a little bit of sniping here oh, at the end. I notice uh, liberal Reinhold shows up the moment we're mocking the conservatives. So I find that funny. He missed the AOC roast earlier. Uh... <laughs> Reinhold, this is only going to contribute to you AOC. being a socialist. This is just I have this is only going to good to say about the Green New Deal. Trust <laughs> me. 
Awesome. Well, uh, guys, thanks again for coming in. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Patreon people, love you. Mm, kisses. Thanks again. Uh, we will do more reaction videos uh, next week. So I hope you enjoyed it.